everybody, welcome to Boneyard Labs. Today we are going to be going over our liquid cooling solution for our KS3 and our KS3M uh, Casper Crypto Miners. All right, so we are ditching the air cooled solution uh, where a lot of people that are buying these ducts, whether it be 3D printing their own design or a third party, um, or buying the Fruition Designs kit um, with the 8 inch AC Infinity fans that you see that are still attached to our wall. Um, we're ditching that because we are just not really happy with the performance that it provides. And uh, so today we're gonna show you this improved solution. Offers way, way, way better cooling in our opinion. Um, and so we're gonna go over that today. But I feel like I owe you guys some juicy, juicy B-roll first. Cue it up. So the process to do the conversion is fairly simple. We removed the heat sinks, cleaned up the chipsets, and of course repasted and installed the heat sinks carefully while paying particular attention to align all the mounting holes. Making sure we torque down in a proper um, kind of a random pattern to distribute the load evenly. Reinstalled the hash boards. And then we have our liquid manifolds here that attach to this backer plate, uh, which installs onto the box. Reattach the data cables. Make sure our fan spoofers are installed. Now we end up deleting two of those fan spoofers. We ended up installing the stock fans back to the back of it. Then we install all our fluid lines. Of course, the top manifold goes to the top ports and the bottom manifold goes to the bottom ports. And one thing we noticed is that when we received these cooling blocks, their fittings were super loose. Um, we ended up taking a wrench and did a light amount of additional pressure, but you can see how far backed off they were. So uh, we made sure to tighten those down. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, then we go ahead and install the radiator. Uh, it needs to be a certain distance away from a wall. I believe it was about two feet is the recommended distance away so that way you have proper airflow throughout the whole system. Next up was filling up the radiator with our distilled water. Lastly, what we had to do is just bleed out all the air um, and get to a good point to where all we're seeing is very small bubbles. And then we just keep an eye on it for about 24 hours and fill up the reservoir and top it off as needed um, as the little bubbles in the system dissipate. So the website we got this from is called ZeusBTC.com. We are not affiliated. We do not have any connection with them at all. This is just out of our own interest. We want to share it with you guys. So. So according to their website, they have three different versions of radiators at the moment, at the time of this recording. They have a 4,000 kilowatt um, rated radiator. They have an 8,000. Uh, so the 4,000 is supposed to be for one miner, uh, one ASIC miner, and then the 8,000 kilowatt is supposed to be capable of operating two uh, ASIC miners. We went, ahead and, we went ahead and got the 12,000 kilowatt because the idea was is that if you have something that could perform, it could carry more capacity and cooling, then we wouldn't have to run the fans as high in order to get the same equivalent cooling effect as the lower rated uh, cooling radiator. All right, so that's why we're running the 12,000. The other reason we went with the cooling solution like this is because I came across a general consensus about electronics, uh, the general rule of thumb that for every 10 degrees C increase for electronics, you theoretically lose its life expectancy. It's cut in half. So if you're running a 10C higher than before, then you're in theory uh, having the life expectancy of that equipment. So we definitely want to run these things for as long as possible. So running them at something much cooler uh, is gonna increase the longevity of these miners. Um, case in point, right here I have in my hands a failed hash board, all right? This is from the KS3M, and uh, we tried to boot this sucker up, and it was not booting. 
uh, it would it would boot up, but it would have voltages that are all over the place. They're normally supposed to run at 0.5 volts each uh, each chip, but we were getting like 0 0.75, 0 0.38, 0 0.62, like all over the board, and we were getting a bunch of temps that were reading way out of spec. Um, and so this thing was acting super wonky. It was very inconsistent. We troubleshot all sorts of stuff, but this did in fact fail. Now I know the KS3Ms have a history of um, failing hash boards, so we're trying to hedge against that cooling plates, all right? So right at the moment, we're only running two out of the three KS3M hash boards, but keep that in mind. We're trying to prevent this from happening. So here's our interface for our KS3. Uh, pretty consistent, it's been running for two days and 19 hours on this cooling solution. Um, and here's our temps, here's our inlet and outlet temps. This, is the, this isn't the board temps, this is just kind of the box temps really. So our inlet right now is our six, you know, 26, 27, 42, 39, 42. But here's where we really see our improvements, okay? Look at this here. So our max chip temp is 55C and our minimum temp is 41C with our average temp being 47C, which is bonkers. So here's board two, 56, 41. Board 3, 54 is the high, 42 is the low. And you can see they're really quite consistent in their temperatures, you know. Um, and I'll show you what the preconditions were here as well. So let me change this over to the KS3M, and I'll show you those. Boom. All right, so like I said before, board 1 is disconnected. It is out of the box, but we're still running it. Um, so we got 62 is the high, and 49 is the low for board 2. And then we got 65 is the high for this one, and 51 is the high, or excuse me, the low for board three. All right, and here's our temps. They look really good. It's far, far better. Now let me show you on my other computer what that means. Oh, and so of course, here's a KS3M. It's running on two boards instead of three. So here's our five minute or 30 minute hash rates. And of course, since we have a board disconnected, it says 127, it's just pegged because there's no logic going into the uh, control board, so it's reporting out as just max temp. Um, and as well, we're gonna get a minor temp abnormal. That isn't the normal thing to see when you drop a board out. So we're still running it and it's still working great. So here is a chart that I developed because I wanted to develop a heat map to see the airflow over a hash board, how that affects the chips. Now, if you look over here, so let me tell you how this works basically. So this is lined up with this hash, uh, this chipset. The next row is lined up with the next chipset. So these are basically a physical match in layout, all right? So that's how I did that. So these chips here, this first chip um, run, as you can see, when it was air cooled, we were getting the low, there's a low right here about 63. So the inlet of the air temperature was low and agreeable. But then by the time it pushed the air, it was, you know, that air was collecting all that heat and just by the time you get to the end, you're at 85, all right? Same thing here, uh, row two, you're starting with a 63 degree inlet and by the time it spits out the air, you're looking at 90C on the chip, 89C, all right? So that's, that's no good. That's basically one degree away from your warning state. So same thing here, inlet temp 68 then it reaches 89 by that time. So that's a big spread in temperature, 65 to 82. And the thing about air cooling, again, that really pissed me off was, even though all these temperatures are in a good range, you have to cater to that one freaking chip or two chips. You have to cater to those damn things. So you have to go and crank up your AC Infinity fan to 70, 80, 90% just to get that down in an agreeable range. So I did not like that aspect. All right, so now, as you can see, underneath that is all this green here, and that's our water cool temp. All right, so we're at 51, so you've already dropped 16 degrees versus an air cooled. And look at that, look at that. 51, 51 with a little bit of heat variation in the middle of 6C versus the difference between 67 and 85. You got 51 to 56 with the hottest one on this uh, chipset being 60. So you're getting, what, a nine degree swing versus a, what, 26 degree swing versus air cooled? That's nuts. That's just absolutely nuts. And more of the same to be seen on the other row of chipsets. So there's the proof there. And right now inside, we're 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And yes, for those of you 
Bonus points if you guys can tell me in the comments section what this is. <clears throat> I'll give you a hint. It's a failed crypto project. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys can identify it. As far as temperatures coming in and out of the radiator, our inlet for our water is 26.7 C um, going into our miners. And then going into the radiator, it's 32.4. Now this is self-regulating. So if it goes above a certain temperature, which I think is like 30, I think if it goes above 30 C, then these fans start kicking up and increasing their speed. So right now we're only at two out of the four lights. And so this is, I mean, it might sound like I'm yelling, but it's just because I want to make sure you guys hear me. Uh, but these are really pretty quiet, um, significantly quieter than the AC Infinity fans. Um, and yeah, there's definitely heat here, but and you can man manually dial it up. Yep, that's true. You can manually, you can manually change the fan speed here and here. Um, so if I crank this guy up a bit, you'll see an increase there. You'll hear him speed up. And then they start to sound more like your typical stock ASIC fans, right? Because that's probably basically what they are. So I'll go ahead and turn that down. Then they can modulate themselves. There we go. So I'll do a little, I'll try to do a little noise comparison. Hopefully it'll come through on the video all right. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead. These AC Infinity fans right now are pulling in outside air. Um, so I'll go ahead and kick them up to what settings they were back when we were air cooling our ASIC miners. So hopefully you can hear how much more sound is generated in here um, back when we were, like I said, run these suckers high. Yeah, so that's to my ear. It sounds like easily double the volume of that radiator perceptively. I definitely feel like I have to holler a lot more. Yeah, double the volume, but not, it didn't reduce the yeah, temperature. Exactly. So now what we're doing is we're running those AC Infinity fans only at like 30% per. We could probably even drop it down more, but just depending on the outside air and how hot it is in here, we just modulate those and that'll help give us uh, some good airflow and circulation. And of course, we have a, a take up register um, up in our ceiling so that um, we can, you know, do a take up for any kind of suction that would be happening um, trying to force air into here, or excuse me, pressure, I guess it would be since we flipped the direction. <laughs> uh, another thing I didn't mention in the setup is we ended up adding some shutoff valves to the inlet and outlet of each miner. Um, into the manifold inlet and the manifold outlet um, as well as this one here so that way if we need to take one of these out of service we can shut it down disconnect everything cut these lines off um, and then really probably in the future we'll add another set of two down here so that you can cut off four and then disconnect just a little tiny tube in between these shutoff valves and then only you only get a little dribble and then all the water still stays in there so you can pull this out do your maintenance that you need to do and then put it back together as far as power consumption for that radiator it is rated at full speed to pull 420 watts according to their website now we are currently pulling at 245.9 volts we're pulling 1.35 amps which equates to about 330 watts right now when we're running two of these so that kind of makes sense we're about two-thirds ish to its max pull of wattage and we're running two uh, miners so maybe two-thirds capacity or so you know so you can factor that in for your uh, power consumption calculations okay let's talk cost uh, and where you can get it I'll leave a link in the description for the ZeusBTC.com for the links of these products that I purchased they have different uh, options so you can explore that as well um, so the radiator itself the 12k uh, the 12 kilowatt radiator costs a little over 400 bucks it's 402 dollars right so there's that for that uh, the cooling plate kit you get three per kit um, and so we got six total and each kit was 170 bucks so times by two you're looking at what 340 bucks so there's that and uh, so it does come with uh, tubing enough tubing to get the job done it does come with the manifolds and all the all the connections uh, it does not come with these T type fittings it just comes with a straight uh, the straight style so if you want to run multiple miners on one radiator you're gonna have to invest in a couple of these T fittings they're a couple bucks a piece I believe um, so you, you got to find them in threes. Yeah, yeah. So but they're ten millimeter. 
Uh, and then these shutoff valves also do not come with it. Uh, we ended up buying those in addition, so another you know eight bucks, ten bucks, something like that. And those are ten millimeter also. Those are ten mil also. Yep. Um, so other things it doesn't come with. It doesn't come with the liquid because you can choose, of course, what you want. We just use distilled water. It's a cheap route. But all in all, for this whole setup, you, uh, we ended up costing us about twelve hundred bucks, right? So six, if you factor that in, that's about six hundred bucks per miner. Now, if you add a third one, then of course you further distribute that cost per miner, so then it gets even more affordable, right? But if you think about it, the, these AC Infinity fans are what, 175 bucks a piece? Plus, if you end up buying, if you end up buying a ducting system, that's about another 195 bucks. If you're going through the, um, what's their name again? Fruition Design. If you're going through Fruition Design, you have to spend another 195 bucks there. Uh, which comes with spoofers and this kit. Plus, you got to think about all the ducting that you're going to need, and some band clamps, and a handful of other little secondary devices that you're going to need to provide a cooling solution. So, per device, you're already looking at about 350, like 350, about four, 400 bucks, 450 maybe, depending on what you do with your whole setup for your air style cooling solution. So, 450, you spend another 150 bucks to, to get this type of cooling. Potentially, you're increasing the life expectancy of your ASICs. You're protecting your chips better because you're having a more nominal chip temperature range. Um, so you can gauge for yourself whether or not that's a good investment for you. We felt that it was, hence why we got this sucker set up. The next thing we wanted to talk about is the necessity for biocide additive into your coolant water. We're using distilled water. Um, and this is a new hose that hasn't been installed and this is a hose that's been in service for a little over a week and uh, you can see it's kind of hazy already and has some already a little bit of green going on right at the connection fitting where the o-ring is and so um, we did not we ordered some uh, biocide additive uh, which was maybe like I don't know eight bucks plus another you know ten bucks or whatever in shipping That'll be necessary to keep this type of stuff at bay. So we got some of that ordered. It'll be here in a few days and we'll go ahead and add that and clear out the lines, hopefully. This is the biocide that we ended up going with. So it is XSPC brand EC6 protectant. Um, it can be used with distilled water and it provides treatment of one liter about five times before you run out of this 30 milliliter um, vial i guess if you want to call it that so we're going to try that out it's still on its way here um so we'll let you know in a follow-up video how that goes so that's all i have for you guys if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments please consider liking and subscribing i'll try to offer more of this uh more of this information as we kind of go through it i'll leave a link in the description for all of the products that we purchased as well as some other links uh, for you guys to browse through as well so that's all i got for you guys today as always happy mining